our call like Chad, if you want to um, say hi, uh, you're definitely welcome to unmute yourself with star seven and just say hello, or you can um, just say hi in the pad. Um, and if there's anyone else that uh, is joining for the first time, please feel free to, to give us a wave. Cool. All right, moving on. So we have the rare occasion that both Matt and Gunnar aren't here today, so I have the honor of emceeing us. Um, you, we're moving on to line 90, where uh, you can find a aggregated blog and press coverage from last week, lots of cool blog posts um, and press hits. And there's a few shout outs here to um, links that weren't in there, but you should definitely take a look at on line 94 and 95. Top 5 Bits of Feedback on Badge Design System by Jess Klein, and Why Mozilla, Manifesto and Milestones by Mr. Lyra. You should also take a look at his post. And with no further ado, we are going to move down to line 109 where Rebecca is going to walk us through the draft social media strategy. And um, you can follow along by clicking on the screen, the screen share link on line 111. Um, take it away, Rebecca. Hi there, can you hear me? Yep, perfect. Okay, great. Um, and can everyone see my screen? Yep. Awesome. Okay, so hi everybody. Um, today I wanted to share some interesting things about our social media audiences and um, talk about some of the goals that the communications team has for 2013. Um, I'd also like to ask you for some problem-solving help uh, so that we can all do a better job of reaching webmakers this year. Um, so this is a draft presentation that's based on our best thinking like, so far. Um, we'd really like your input to help make it better. Um, there's going to be some ways to do that uh, after the presentation. Um, I'm going to move a little bit quickly because I have a lot of things to cover. So um, please let me know if I'm going too fast. Um, I'm also calling I'm operating team machines, so um, if I'm a little slow, apologies. Okay, so to get started, um, I'm going to show you a graph. Um, this graph shows the size of our audience right now. Um, so in April 2012, we had about 16,000 followers on only two channels, which was Facebook and Twitter. Since then, we've established two other channels that are important to us, um, one on Tumblr and one on YouTube. Um, and this chart shows that we've grown to over 100,000 followers now, and shows where we will likely be in August if the current trends continue, which will be something like 250,000. Uh, we want to do much better than current trends. Though. And this is what our slide deck is all about. Uh, Rebecca, sorry to interrupt quick. Um, it sounds like there might be some volume issues. If there's a way to either speak louder or with the mic closer to you, that might help. Okay. But other than that, awesome. Thank you. Okay. So um, this is our strategic plan for 2013. Um, these are the essential parts. Uh, last year as we worked out exactly what WebMaker was and could be, um, we were constantly sprinting around trying things out and changing things just about every week. And now that WebMaker has established a social media audience and communities are forming around it and stuff, we've come to understand them a bit better. Uh, we know they need clear info and that there are specific things that we can do to get even more of them having great experiences and joining in. And we figured out a few ways to encourage that. Uh, customizing channels, this really means doing what we always said we should do, which is reduce noise. But now we have much better insights about who needs to hear what and where that content should go. Uh, building resources. Um, we're also much clearer about what we're asking people to do, and we can now plan outcomes that make sense to users and make sure that they don't get stuck in uh, what we've called the inhumane sections of the mullet. Uh, so basics like FAQs and contact info where users need to find those things um, are important for us to help deliver. Uh, track and evaluate. Well, we have metrics set up now. That's awesome, and we'll be using them to guide our decisions. Um, we're also promoting the internal version of the gallery tool later on in the deck um, so that we can locate makes better. Uh, and we have some very targeted questions for relevant teams in there at the end um, that are related to infrastructure. Uh, but these are things that we already believe are or should be in the roadmap. So 
it won't be a big surprise. Uh, so moving on, uh, what do we actually know about makers? Um, or at least what do we know about makers on our social media audiences? Um, we know that they are active on social media. Um, they like Mozilla, and they want to belong to something important. But when it comes to actually making things online, they don't really like to be reminded. They are learning as they go, um, even when that's what they came for. Uh, they like to go fast and uh, get results and tell their buddies. So interacting with us really only factors in when we can help them get a little famous, which gets them more respect from their peers. Um, so exposure is a really great reward for makers. Um, mind you, that said, they like to have a say. And they like to make suggestions um, or criticisms and do task-related stuff. Uh, so we can still do a lot to engage with the maker, like quick surveys, join the cool movement, share a project, uh, talk about what you made and what it means to you. Um, there's plenty of room on this channel uh, for this type of activity. Um, and it's what's really crucial here um, as well is to really play into the idea of having fun for fun's sake. Uh, increasing excitement and desire to use our tools is going to come from the maker who has their own goal um, that our tools help him or her achieve. Okay, so we'll move on to mentors. Um, so we know mentors are totally awesome, right? Um, right now they're plowing through crazy on ramps, they're asking for help, they want to build things for other people, and they're totally excited by what we're doing. So what can we say? Uh, mentors, the comms group knows you'll be really well taken care of by the community and engagement teams. Um, so we're basically saying here that we want to ensure our channels work for you too. And we'll be taking direction from the others to help support and promote mentor work this year, of course. Okay. Um, oh. oh, that's neat. Cool. Um, so Tailoring content for different audiences. Uh, this stuff is pretty basic now that we've done the actual deciding and evaluating part. Uh, in short, we need to consolidate a few channels, lose a few others, um, and only programming content that has specific goals or is part of a campaign on the other channels. So a campaign would be something that plays out more over time as opposed to really direct hits of calls to action constantly. Um, the whole process is going to be tracked much better now. Uh, so we'll be able to file bugs on any system issues and also see for sure what's working with audience if it falls flat. Uh, and last, we really need to address the fact that we need help with the language barriers. Um, okay. So now we're going to take a look at all of the channels and describe what we know. Okay. Um, the dreaded Facebook. Um, we think Facebook is our best option for engagement activity. Uh, simple content, high production value, clear calls to action are all really popular in this space. Um, on the flip side, if the links or the pages look risky, they will not visit them out of concern for security. Um, likers support the idea of youth learning web making, but they need a little uh, bit of encouragement to try it for themselves. Um, and we also need to attract more women into our Facebook community. Um, they don't really distinguish us as different from Firefox on there yet, uh, so we do receive a lot of mixed feedback, um, but we also get good growth from that. Um, another interesting thing about our Facebook audience is it's over 50% of it is non-English speaking, um, or they speak ESL. Um, and I've worked with various communities um, to get help for some of the guys on our channel. I see a lot of potential there to export WebMaker into these uh, Moz community groups globally if we have the right uh, localization support in place. Um, and one more thing to recommend this channel is that many of our most active mentor group members that are here like right now on the call um, converged on our Summer Code Party Facebook group originally to self-promote their projects. And they use that as a springboard to get involved with our weekly calls. So we think spending time in this space is really important. Um, Tumblr. This is my favorite channel. This is a crazy channel for us. It's really interesting. Um, it's got Tumblr as a channel has gregarious growth, uh, really simple content publishing tools, 
and some fascinating and interesting ways to find, share, and make content. So it's constantly evolving. In just six months, we grew the channel 5,000%, and that's basically 1,000 to 62,500 in six months' time, which is amazing and hilarious. Um, we made some really good choices and partnerships that um, allowed us to do that, um, that established the channel. Um, but unfortunately, our conversions leave a lot to be desired, um, people acting on our content, um, especially when you know that some content on Tumblr actually has to be tracked downstream in nine cycles. We're, we're sort of stuck in cycle one and two still. Um, so this channel is for funny, smart, young, hit makers to create, uh, to curate, share, and riff with each other in this like mega million user playground. Um, another really cool thing about Tumblr is that content lasts a long time um, due to the way that Tumblrs are exposed to it inside their own dashboard. Like once someone follows you, they almost never look at the front end of your blog ever again. Um, so all content is delivered in your own stream, in your own dashboard, just asking to be shared. Um, there's an amazing variety of stuff on there, jokes, memes, gifts, dissertations, news. Um, but only the best of it lives a long life. Um, and Tumblrs are pretty much content addicts. Um, they're kind of like online gamers. So if you want your content to hit far and wide, whatever it is that you're doing, first make it kick ass, and then get it on Tumblr. Okay, let's move to Twitter. Um, Twitter is sort of like the mothership of our channels. Uh, we haven't seen a lot of new growth on it, but that has a lot to do with us using it to turn all the other channels around. Um, we're basically happy to start using it now like a parent brand for the Mozilla project, and that will allow us to um, bring stronger credibility to the new at WebMaker channels and others as we grow them. So we'll continue to use Hootsuite to stage our content and of course open it up to other working groups so they can directly manage their messaging when they need to. All right. And here are the current channels we have in mind for each audience. Uh, in some cases we'll be starting fresh, like uh, starting to use the at WebMaker handle. And um, that's why we'll always be using the at Mozilla channel to shepherd followers in towards different channels. Like I said, we use Hootsuite. So we can deliver content to almost all these channels using Hootsuite right now. All right, trying to move along. Um, metrics, metrics. We've talked a lot about implementing metrics um, to teach us how to run effective campaigns or to solve mysteries that we still have. Um, like figuring out audience behavior. This stuff is all pretty obvious. Um, but it's important to say that we need eyeballs and action on these channels or we're not going to hit these goals that we have for WebMaker. Um, metrics is really going to help us do this. Um, I also mentioned here that um, we should think of metrics as something that we can create to suit our own needs, which again just means asking really pointed questions to sample audience members. Um, useful stuff like that can really make a big difference. All right, this is my favorite part of the deck. Oops, where are we? There we are. <laughs> um, this is a picture <laughs> um, that um, shows makers using our social media channels and what I think would help make that awesome. Um, so please look at the top middle of the picture. Uh, these are our social media channels, and we send cool stuff down along our feeds like cool projects and makes. And so you can see the kid with the bangs just found one. He thinks that's so cool. He like clicks into it, drops into the web making experience, and gets to work. So while this kid is making stuff, something could totally happen. Like if he gets stuck and you know he looks for a quick solution, he can go to perhaps the support page. Um, the support page has FAQs, known issues, and other information that mofos have left there for them. Um, if the maker can't figure something out or finds a bug, they could always send us an email from there. Um, that email could be answered by anyone available or be up-leveled to MoFo community or engagement groups to be answered. That answer will eventually be put back on the support page for the next maker. And either way, the maker here uh, finishes and shares their make with their friends. 
So the next awesome thing here that I'm showing in the picture is that when the maker shares the make, that info could be shared with us at the same time. We could maybe see lots of information that would be useful to know, such as which ones are most popular, shared, favorited, etc. So the gallery here on the right makes sure that we can see what is being made and use it to impress and excite new makers because that's how the game kind of works. And right now, we can't even find the best things that makers make. And so that's really important to solve this year. All right, I hate to leave my favorite picture. All right. So um, uh, another part of the support puzzle we've identified, and I think we're even talking about this a little later in the call with Lainey, is um, what we're calling in comms like the knowledge base. And we see this as a little distinct from the support page and as it's really important resource to develop for the people who will be doing engagement. So this would be something that supports the supporters. Um, the support page itself is pretty much what we just described in the graphic, a real thing that supports the makers. And this is the easiest and most needed thing that we could do that will probably drive some of our best insights for improving the product this year um, in our opinion. <laughs> So um, creating the gallery. Um, the gallery is something that we've all been talking a lot about. We know that it's coming and we're super stoked. Um, I'm glad I got the early opportunity to show you how it might be of use to comms, just sort of like quickly publishing cool stuff back into the streams. Um, but there's so many more opportunities that will arise from being able to evaluate how our tools perform and what kinds of types of things makers like to do and how new audiences react to what's created. Um, so this really needs to be the net that captures those activities because we, do, we don't have one. Okay. Uh, almost done. Thank you for your patience. Okay. So this slide is really talking about how the non-devs among us uh, could fit into the development cycle a bit better this year. Um, for example, we've been using the maker content all year on all of our channels. And we're also in pretty close contact with some of the people who don't know what we know about the tools. So when we identify something really important, like popcorn needing thumbnails, for example, is one that came up for me, um, how do we best get that into the roadmap? Um, like if there's new places to find that info, where does that live? And I don't know, possibly these on-ramps should be part of the knowledge base or something, but um, that's something I'd like to, to work on clarifying a little bit. Um, and another more specifically comms related question at the bottom here is how to synchronize the comms team with engineering as we build out uh, WebMaker properties. Um, I could think of say like MozFest last year. Um, so we need to find that sort of sweet spot for editorial and content production and contribution between the two groups. Um, and the last slide here, uh, just wrapping it up. Um, so we've described some top level strategy. Uh, we've described some plans and activities for using channels better. And we've identified some important elements that improve our effectiveness. Um, but what about the goal of reaching millions of new web makers? Well, like, we think these plans will help us ensure we're getting the best of our offerings in front of them, uh, that we're helping them where they need it, and inspiring them with messages they find important. And you know, if we do that well, they will help us spread the word. And that's really how social media and audience growth um, works and, and how, it, how it works best. <laughs> so I'd like to wrap up by saying thank you for listening to this draft plan of action. I can see a ton of comments here um, and questions, so this is awesome. Um, I wanted to add that you, you might see uh, uh, there's a link uh, on line 149, which is my deck on, in Etherpad form. So if you really want to dig into this with me, uh, feel free to, to get in there. And um, let me take a look at some questions. Cool. <laughs> Sorry, it was Windows being awesome. Yeah, this, you did a great job, Rebecca. Um, oh, I mean, there's, there's lots of good comments and plus ones and stuff. I mean, what seems like might be a, an emerging thread with a lot of the questions is, um, is this kind of tension, like the opportunity of, of being active in places like Facebook and, and, and uh, Tumblr where there's quite a lot of users, but 
how can we use those channels in a way that still um, talks about things like privacy and data ownership, or can we, can we use those channels in a way to positively um, you know, teach people or show people uh, how they can take control of their data and be web makers even in those kinds of ecosystems? Um, yeah, that's something I didn't spend a lot of time talking about because I, I sort of felt like um, the maker section needed to be fleshed out a little bit more. Um, I would say that that's pretty much always going to be a defining characteristic of our communications. Um, I'm not really suggesting, and nobody's really suggesting that we stop being Mozilla and start being a product. Um, and in fact, I would say that the vast majority of the audience we've collected is simply based on the fact that people really, really, um, their values align with us very strongly. Um, they see the Mozilla name and they're like, yeah, man, I like that. And they're sort of patiently listening to us evolve um, you know, our mission to include web making. Um, so yes, and, and it's sort of like in a weird sort of way saying that at Mozilla a Twitter channel is, is our leader and always will be. It's like the mothership because that content in our opinion is always going to be distributed to all of our channels. Um, people love it. So I, I wouldn't say that that's something that's going to ever go away. Does that help? Is there anything else here? Um, yeah, there, there's just a really nice active thread on like starting on like line 130 and stuff, people okay. going into it on detail. Um, so I'm just looking through. If, if, um, pick a question if there's stuff that you want to respond to, and I might read through a bit as well. Okay. Oh, I see. Is that, is that you, Ryan, answering some of these questions? Okay. Um, yeah, our insights and conclusions are um, come from actually like engaging with people, uh, the interviews, long conversations, and you know just um, evaluating what what happens when we program content and watching it um, be worked with and interacted with on channel. Um, how do people feel about Facebook as a primary engagement channel? Um, I I completely understand. Uh, that Facebook is not um, a, a channel that we would love to align with necessarily, but I do feel like um, our makers are living there and we should talk to them. And perhaps we can teach them to come out of Facebooks and other things like that. Um, but we shouldn't ignore them just because they happen to have found Facebook before they found us. Um, let's see. What do likes mean to us? What does this metric mean for the long haul? Um, in every case, every single person that I've described as a follower um, on social media is basically a person who's willing to let us talk to them. Um, that says absolutely nothing about their desire to interact with our content, um, whether they're actually going to be convinced to try our things. And this is why it's so important that we um, we bring our top level content to them. It's polished. Um, it's not frightening. It's not janky. Uh, they're not going to think, especially on Facebook, they, like I said, they won't click links um, if they look weird because they've, they understand that that can cause, like that could be suspicious. Um, so if likes um, and ears, I mean, that, that's, you just have to get bums in the seats. And that's, you know, whether people are like your show or not, they'll decide that. But people do like us. We went from we went from 16,000 to 100,000 um, in a pretty short time, and with, in a scenario where we're pretty scrambled. Um, we we didn't know what WebMaker was. Um, now that we know what it is, I think we have everything set in place for some really strong growth this year. We we know what we're talking about. We know what we want people to do. Um, I think it's we have every opportunity to be super effective at growing these channels and getting more ears. Um, uh, can anybody else sort of flag for me anything? Um, I'm happy to yeah. follow up any other time. I should really stop talking now though. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. I mean, this has definitely sparked um, a lively debate which I think is really healthy. And, um, and thanks for leading the way with with such a clear presentation, and um, and congratulations on helping drive so much of this growth. So, yay! Huge thank thanks. You. <laughs> yay! Awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna star six.
to unmute. Star six. All right. As you star six, I'm going to ask uh, Aaron Knight to star seven. Um, and if Jonathan or Mary could help promote Aaron to uh, presenter, we're going to go back into the slide share. You can see the link on 164. Um, and Aaron is going to talk about the Webmaker Badges Roadmap. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello. Yep. Hello. Okay, so Jonathan is going to share. You. Yeah, he's going to share my slides for me um, because I don't have Java on my computer or something crazy like that. Um, <clears throat> cool. So welcome everyone to the Webmaker Badges Strategy and Roadmap. Um, before I jump in, I just want to um, clarify that this is the roadmap for um, exactly what it says, the Webmaker Badges. Um, and there is actually a separate roadmap um, for the Open Badge Infrastructure piece. And one way to think about that is the Open Badge Infrastructure is sort of um, at the macro level where we're working on building an ecosystem around badges as credentials, and Webmaker Badges is the micro level, like a specific, um, specific badge system or set of badge systems that, um, that we're going to work with. So, so anyway, I'll be back to present the, um, the OBI uh, roadmap at some point. Um, and uh, so this is not reflective of all the work the team is doing. But anyway, I'll dive in. All right, next slide. <coughs> so, um, one way to really think about this, or one way I'm going to keep coming back to um, to sort of reframe this, is that really when we talk about the Webmaker Badges stuff, we're building Webmaker Badges with a capital W, and Webmaker Badges with a lowercase w, which I'll explain. So it's, it's both the very, very specific things we're going to be um, delivering as well as a broader set um, of uh, competencies and, and badges as well. Next slide. Um, so there's four adjustments I'm going to go through and then give you a brief insight to sort of how that plays out over the, the four quarters. So the first objective is build the, the web literacy standard. So if you go to the next slide. Um, so Doug has been doing a bunch of work on defining web literacy. And he's talked to a bunch of people and um, socialized this a bunch. And this is our kind of current thesis around the skills that we think um, play into web literacy or web literacy, as he says. Um, and um, so this is really great, and this, this is all, we, we did this intentionally as the sort of um, skeleton or the foundation behind the, the badges that we would want to issue um, from, from Mozilla Webmaker. Uh, next slide. But what we really want to do is reframe this and rethink this and reapproach this um, as a web literacy standard. So um, for those of you that might not be familiar, you know, there, there's a bunch of um, learning standards out there that really define um, skills, define rubrics, you know, get, put, put a bunch of stuff on paper that, that teachers and schools and school districts can align to so that everybody kind of um, feels comfortable and confident that they're sort of teaching the same type of stuff or to the same, to the same standard. So what we're going to do this year, um, starting very, very soon, is actually, again, reframe or rethink about the web literacy definition work as a standard itself. So really looking at it as a product. So what, what does that mean? What do we have to deliver? What do we have to maintain? What makes it easy to on-ramp people to using that standard? Um, and we're going to invite a bunch of people to the table to help build it with us. So we have the, again, Doug has done a bunch of work to give us the, the baseline. And um, starting uh, early February and into March, we're going to be um, pulling a bunch of people together to actually um, really build some accountability and um, partnership around the standard itself. Um, and then the alignment is, um, uh, is really the main ask. So, so basically right now there's a bunch of people out there that we know that are already doing it, stuff that's similar to WebMaker or fits into the web literacies framework that, that we care about. And we've talked a lot about building this big tent um, that they can come under, but this is actually a real ask. This is like, you know, go ahead and do what you're doing, but align it to the standard and let's all um, uh, move forward together. Um, and, and one thing to note before I move on is just that like this, when, as we started to really think about it this way, is like this big aha for us because this is what Mozilla does, right? Like Mozilla is all about open standards and we're, we're, we're really good at promoting them at, at protecting them, at um, growing them, and so um, so this this is something that um, I think people will really respond to very well when they hear us talk today. Next slide. Um, the coolest thing, or a cool one of the cool things about this, is that um, we're doing a bunch of work on the OBI side around badge validation, um, which is really about how do you ensure that the learning behind the badge is real, um, and. Uh, 
I have a paper that I've written which I can share with everybody if you're interested. But um, one of the things that we're doing is extending the metadata specification for the badge. So we, you know, we, one of the things that we've done with the OBI is to find, to find this essentially the standard for a badge. Um, and that's probably the most important piece to this so that badges are interoperable. But one thing that we're going to be doing this year um, is extending that metadata spec to include a URL for standards alignment so that people can actually put the URLs back to the standards that their badge is aligned to in the badge itself and it lives with that badge forever and it will travel with that badge. So in this scenario with this web literacy standard, um, this allows basically all of the partners or the people that are aligning to issue their own badges but link back to the standard within the badge and then we can actually track that through the badge. So we will get a sense of um, everybody out there that is actually aligning with the standard through the badges that they're issuing. Um, so it's pretty cool because I mean one of the, one of the goals that um, were on Mark's slides that we presented a few weeks ago um, around the learning side was to, you know, it's about getting people to actually adopt or use earn webmaker badges, but then also getting a bunch of partners to actually issue them themselves. And this is like a different flavor on that, right? Because this allows people to have their own branding, to do their own thing, to have their own badges, but still be part of um, essentially be issuing webmaker badges because it's aligned with the standard. So that's the first piece, and that's the, that's the really big piece. Um, next slide. Um, but then the second objective, um, which goes along with that is, is again, that what I was talking about before, kind of uh, webmaker badges with a lowercase w. And, and then we also really want to grow the badges that we actually issue from our site itself. So we want to launch more badges, um, and that includes more skills. We want to have, we want to have badges um, and tools and content that um, teach people um, more skills across that, that web literacy standard. Um, and eventually by the end of the year, we want to have pathways for people to, to earn all of those skills some of those being McGill and some of those being our partners. Um, and then we're also working a bunch with MoCo um, on um, other sets of Mozilla badges and ultimately we want to have a Mozilla badge system that is connected in some way. Next slide. Um, objective three is, um, is building assessment pathways. And this part is the fuzziest. It's, it's the most exciting um, and it's also the fuzziest. Um, but the idea is obviously you know, badges are not assessment and learning, they're the thing that happens after the assessment and learning. And so, um, uh, you know, obviously within Webmaker, within our tools and our content, we, we've already started thinking about assessment. There's embedded assessment in Thimble, and we want to expand that so that there's peer assessment. So we're really leveraging the community to um, be mentors and to review things and to um, start to create that kind of, um, kind of community around these skills. Um, but then we also, when we think about, again, about really scaling and growing, we really want people to be able to learn other places as well um, and still be part of this, still kind of plug into this, um, this push for, for a web literate planet. And so one of the ways that we can do that is allow someone to go learn somewhere else or to make something somewhere else and come back and actually use the URL or the evidence of what they um, created uh, towards getting webmaker badges. So you can imagine I go to Code Academy, I build a web, a web page, I come back, and I actually submit that um, URL to the web page I built to pledge for some of the Webmaker badges and get assessed by this community and everything still kind of lives within this community and I can up-level to different things that we offer and that kind of thing. So, so I think the assessment pathways are really, really, really powerful. Um, we, we kind of have to figure out how to do it right, but it's um, the, where we'll start first is building peer assessment within Webmaker. Okay, objective number four, the last one. Um, so objective number four is where it really starts to cross over with the OBI. And um, we've, we've done it a lot of talking. I joke that the code name is New Backpack, which isn't a very good code name. Um, but we talked a lot about the New Backpack. Um, and the idea is that right now the Backpack is really, really straightforward. It's, you see the badges that you've earned and you can create some groups that you can share. Um, but there's, and it's all about what you've already done, right? It's just about your badges. And so there's a bunch of opportunity there um, around really letting people see the other badges that are out there, like recommending badges to them, letting them set goals, um, discover additional learning, discover mentors, whatever. Like there's tons and tons of stuff that we could be doing that, that makes this actually more valuable to the user, um, more valuable to the issuers, to us, that kind of thing. So, so that is something we're going to do this year, and most likely what we're gonna, we'll, we'll build it for Webmaker first, um, and then roll that out as something that's, um, that's in the backpack. So next slide. So in kind of a summary, um, 
if, if this were a metric slide, pretend this is a metric slide, it's obviously not because it's not very specific, but um, the kind of snapshot of, of at the end of 2013 what success would look like would be if we had launched and had the recognized standard for web literacy um, and we had a bunch of partners that were aligning with that standard, which I think is very, very likely. Um, that we actually, when people come to WebMaker, um, they actually can find ways to learn all of those skills across that whole grid that you saw. And again, some of that might be stuff that we offer through our tools and content, and some of that stuff might be other, other partners, but that we're pointing them out and kind of helping them see their the universe of things to learn. Um, but gazillions of people are earning the WebMaker badges, obviously, again, uh, we need to get a little more specific than that. But again, I mean, it, as um, you know, the adoption of these, the fact that people want to earn them, want to level up, want to keep earning them, obviously is an important piece of the success. And then finally, that Mozilla is at the center. And I think this makes people a little uncomfortable sometimes because we always talk about being as open as possible and everything being distributed. And, and that will be true. But again, since we are kind of maintaining the standard, we're talking about building these assessment pathways. Like there, there is an incentive for people to come back to webmaker.org um, to earn these badges, to kind of be part of this community, to kind of grow that reputation there. And that's, that is a good thing for us, right? So, so I think that, that is one, um, one possibility that we set up for. So I'm just really, really quickly going to burn through the Q1, Q2, Q3, and then, and then go for questions. So next slide, um, just how this kind of breaks down is, is Q1 is really the kickoff stuff. So we, we're going to have a virtual event um, early February where we invite kind of anyone and everyone uh, to kind of hear about what we want to do with the web, with the web literacy standard. And then we'll have um, at least one face-to-face -face summit, maybe two, maybe one in London and, the, and one in the U.S. Um, to really bring people around the table with the intention of let's build this together and sort of sign up to align with it. Uh, Q2, next slide, um, is really when we're aiming to launch the second wave of, of our badges. So we're going to expand. Right now we really only do HTML and CSS. And we want to expand um, across a few more skills so that we can really explain what we mean by literacy, it's not just the hard skills. Um, uh, and then we also, with this, will launch the first uh, pieces of the peer assessment functionality. Q3, um, next slide, is um, really trying to um, seamlessly integrate it with um, where, you know, sort of the direction that WebMaker is moving itself. So instead of just having badges and symbol, like really building it into WebMaker X or whatever it is at that point and, um, and making that a seamless experience. And that obviously will mean some additional badges as well um, because of that. And then Q4 is ModFest and it's, it's a, a biggie. So it's really like those assessment pathways, the new backpack, and then having that kind of full map or full set of, um, of pathways to all of the web literacy standards. I'm oh, sorry, web literacy skills. So next slide is, is it the end or just the beginning? Yeah. And with that, I will stop talking and move over to the questions. Awesome. Thank you, Erin. Um, so there's definitely some lively uh, questions and comments in here. I might need your help parsing um, some, but one quick one that emerged um, is this idea about talking about like endorsed pathways and endorsed badges. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, someone has this idea about a uh, peer validated playlist. I don't you might have to break it down first, but you might understand yeah. the peer. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. this is, I didn't go into detail on this because again, this, um, this kind of is tied back to the badge validation stuff. But again, if people are interested, I'd be happy to present on the call. But, and then also the OBI stuff. But the idea with badge validation is, um, is that the badges are linked to standards, but that there's also this. Um, uh, there's basically badge ador endorsement, which is these third party um, allows third parties to come in and sign off on badges. So um, you could imagine like MIT could look at our badges and say, oh wow, we think that this is a really great HTML badge and like endorse it. And so then when that badge is shared, um, it's a Mozilla badge, but it also is endorsed by MIT. So it's, it's about adding more information and more trust to the badge so that when somebody is using that badge or consuming it, they understand its value. Um, and so um, one opportunity for us uh, on this is that, again, if people are aligning with the, the web literacy standard, um, we can actually look at the badges that are saying that they're aligning to the standard and actually review them and endorse the ones that we feel are, in fact, aligning. So there's a lot of power for us to kind of, again, stay um, really kind of relevant in this and, and as a strong backer in this um, if you want to. And what Doug is talking about, I think it's Doug, 
is that there, the, once we go down the endorsement path, like the potentials are huge, right? Like it's that people could not only endorse badges, they can endorse pathways of badges. So you could imagine somebody pulling together a set of badges and saying, I think this is a PhD, and, and like Harvard looking at it and endorsing it or something. So like it, it gets really, really powerful and really complex and really cool and scary at the same time um, quite quickly, but that, that is something that we are working on um, a lot on the ODI side as well. Awesome. Um, it looks like there's also a question quickly, if, if there's a way, uh, if, are you going to publish these slides anywhere? Sure, yes. So I will publish the slides and put the link in here um, as we move on. And I also have an, this all in an Etherpad that people can, um, if you want to add specific comments on specific line items, you can. Um, so check back in here and then I can email it to the, oh, I'm going to blog about this later too, so I'll include everything there later today. Awesome. Cool. Um, and if there's another question that, or two that, come, that uh, grabs your eye, free, feel free to answer that in parsing. Okay. Uh, so maybe we can turn that into a content type. Um, I don't think I totally understand the badges content type question. So maybe if somebody wants to explain that. Okay. And then there's one, one, maybe one last quick question on line yeah. 184. It's a more a product idea, but maybe you want to respond to this. Um, somebody checking out some badges um, and only making them available once their students uh, accomplish certain milestones. Right. Yeah, so the question about what does this look like as a product is a huge question. Um, and I think that's, that's stuff that Doug and Carla are working on right now. Is, um, the easiest thing it looks like is just sort of maintaining that, that set of of, what, of kind of what we think the skills are, um, as well as like some definition to try to get more specific. But most likely it includes um, like kind of outcomes or rubrics aligned with that, um, as well as maybe even some tools to make this easy. Um, as a mentor, one of my actors and badges. Um, right. So this process of checking out, like we, we kind of have to figure out. So I think, again, check, some checking out will be, um, you know, again, having like explaining the skills, explaining the types of things that we want to see people be able to do, like they should be able to build a web page, and then pointing people to places or places that we know that you could do that. Um, and the way that we think about badges, just to be clear, is that you don't have to necessarily earn them or accept them all the time. Like you, especially with the peer assessment, you can go build something and then um, sort of pledge for it and if you want the badge. So, so in terms of like, if, if I understand the checking out, like you can kind of play around with stuff, try out the criteria, um, sort of see how it feels before you actually sort of dive into I want this badge. And if you happen to get the badge, you don't have to accept it if you don't want it. But um, so I'm not sure if I totally answered that question, but um. cool. Well, it seems like there's still some lively uh, link sharing and comments going on. So I encourage people if it is interesting to you, definitely check out Aaron's blog post um, and keep adding your thoughts to the Etherpad. Cool. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Aaron. All right, Carla, Carrie, Damien, would you guys like to talk about open badges getting credit? Star hey. seven to unmute. Um, hey, it's Carla. And Carrie and Damien actually could not join the call, so I'm going to speak in their stead. Um, Carrie and Damien, you may all actually know through um, the Providence After School Alliance, their PASA. And uh, they, we, they actually came to MozFest and they performed, they actually performed, they um, did badge bingo. And so that's how some of you might actually know them. But anyway, they have been one of the DML competitions funded winners and they are just fantastic and they have been working to, in order to get badge recognized from higher ed. So um, some high school students in Providence, Rhode Island will now receive school credit for the, the learning experiences that they're getting through PASA. And you can check that link on line 219. Um, so just it's been a huge win for us getting um, a higher education institution, even a community college, to get to acknowledge badges as representations of learning. So we're feeling like this is just kind of the first, um, uh, the kind of tip of the wave. So we're pretty excited. And we're hoping that both Carrie and Damien can come and talk about um, how they managed to get that to happen um, in a future call. So um, absolutely, we're really excited and we just want to give them huge applause for getting us um, really started down a pathway for 
having badges be accepted not only from an educational standpoint, but down the road for being accepted as um, ways to get jobs and uh, align people with organizations. So just great work. And I'll pause if there are any questions. Some applause and people sharing the badge bingo link, which you should definitely check out as well. Um, It looks like, so Carly, you're also on to talk <laughs> about the next item if, if folks don't have any questions about this other than big props to Carrie and Damien. Cool. So we have been working, the Open Badges team has been working with the Web Dev Stewards. They are launching the first iteration of MoCo Badges. So this is a, an interesting um, intersection of a whole bunch of work that's been happening. So um, they are not necessarily WebMaker badges, but they are coming from Mozilla. And again, this is going to be one of those things to see how everything intersects ultimately. So um, the Web Dev Stewards are the initial badges, and they are going to be launched uh, earlier, or sorry, um, not earlier this year. It's, we're still early in the year. But later this year, um, probably within Q1 um, at the latest, probably um, early Q2. And please click on line 241 because what they're doing is actually asking people to submit designs for their badges. So they have a series of badges that they have expressed um, that they would like to see created. And it's a call for badge design. So if you cl click on line 241, you can see um, what the request is. And we're already getting some badges coming in, some badge designs. And they, we ask, they're asked to be tagged on Flickr. So it allows people to kind of look at them, and we've had some really interesting designs come in already. So what's great about this is we're actually asking the community to help design the badges that we're going to be issuing to the community. So it's a really nice feedback mechanism, and it allows everybody to feel like they're involved in the development of the badge designs themselves. And after Web Dev Stewards um, badge, badges go out, so they're kind of the prototype where we're going to um, make sure we're getting everything right. There are a series of other badges that will be coming out from MoCo as well. So we're really excited about this. It's kind of the first in a series. Excellent. It's, uh, badges are, are tearing it up. Um, if folks have any questions or comments for Carla, definitely add them in the chat at Etherpad. Now with only about 11 minutes left, we're going to move with a fast clip on to Mr. Brett Gaylor to talk about WebMaker Roadmap Continue. Mr. Brett. Hi. Hello. Uh, so <clears throat> I just want a quick item here. I've um, been processing the ton of feedback that we got after the presentation last week, so I just wanted to, to thank everybody for that. It's, it's pretty awesome to work um, for an open organization where you can expect uh, that much uh, intelligent feedback. So thank you for that. Um, and one of the, I would want to say that one of the most important bits of feedback that we got, uh, particularly from colleagues, was that sort of forecasting too far into the future um, and tying these features, um, tying features and updates that we wanted to make to the roadmap uh, to specific dates and releases was, it was, it was potentially counterproductive because um, it prevented us from quickly iterating when we learn new things. Um, so this is something I, I heard kind of loud and clear. So for instance, if we find that users are reacting to specific types of content or features that we introduce, uh, we want to be able to, to, put more, to put more muscle behind a specific feature or fix a part of the workflow that we uncover. So instead, what I'm, what I'm trying to do and present um, again next week is, is focus on something more simple, which is essentially a set of priorities for the year. And then from that, a list of the things that we're going to prioritize right away. Because one of the things um, that we do want to make as a priority is shipping much faster. And so it, forecasting too far into the future can be difficult for that. It, it's, you know, there's a lot, lots of engineering um, theories, um, but one of them is, is certainly that you want to be able to, to, to ship really fast. And that's something that we want to do. Um, <clears throat> so, there's an Etherpad link online now. It's line 258, um, but I just I posted in some of these um, priorities for the year. I can go through them now, but you'll see that on line 60, the first one is that we want to iterate on what WebMaker content looks like and measure how users react. So this is really kind of a follow-up to Rebecca's point um, in the beginning that we, 
you know, we've had something in the market for a while now, and we want to. Um, sorry, somebody is changing the title of that Etherpad. It's not that. Um, <laughs> and um, we want to we want to get something to our users much much faster, and we think that that's actually going to help us. Um, Choose which which features to prioritize as well. So that's going to be a really um, important er focus for us in the next quarter. And you know the, the rest of them are pretty self-explanatory. We want to be a great learning experience. Um, and again, to Rebecca's point, we want to develop um, web experiences that work in the spaces where users live on time, where, where users live online. So some of this means just reducing the amount of friction to share uh, WebMaker. Um, makes on places like Twitter and Tumblr and Facebook, but we also want to, we want to develop a Facebook app. We want to see what it would look like to have um, a WebMaker experience inside of, um, inside of that platform to see what it would look like. And we also this year want to work on some sort of constrained um, mobile experience. So not just taking what we have and making it work on a phone or on a tablet, but creating something that makes sense for within mobile so that's that's fast, that's easy to do. Um, obviously, we want to focus on localization as well. And um, on line 271, develop a method for external partnerships and developers to influence our code base. Last year, when we were building much of this, uh, much of the foundations for our work, it could sometimes be hard to imagine um, how others could be forking, you know, this jet that we were flying while we were building it, and this year we do want to focus on how we can make that happen. And we're starting to see that in various different ways. I know in the popcorn mailing list, even today, there's um, educators who are discussing how to, to fork the code base for use within their, their particular environment. And the last um, two things is, you know, we showed the WebMaker X prototype a few weeks ago, and what I wanted to say about that is it's important for us that we want to expose enough code However we decide to do that, whether it's via the proposal that prototype, which are via some sort of markup, or in another method, the important thing is that we want our users to learn web mechanics if desired. So there's lots of UX work to go into how much of that we expose, when to expose it in, in their flow and all that, but it's a priority for the year and we're going to do it. Um, and just the last thing is that we want to make working open and agile, we want to make both of those processes work together. So we want to continue to be um, sharing our roadmaps and letting um, you and, and other users influence them, but we need to be um, agile enough that we can put um, our resources behind features that make the most sense and, and, and work in that way. So I'm going to present goal, shit fast. That's exactly right, on, on 279. So. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to present something again next week, but if you want to dig into some of the thinking, um, there's a link on line 258, and how to get involved. If you want to go into that Etherpad on line 58 and just um, add some things that maybe you feel should be priorities for us in the year, um, so we can get those into our own queue. So thanks. Awesome, Brent. Yeah, thanks for these crisp priorities, and thanks to everyone for, for weighing in and giving um, giving us feedback. We look forward to the next iteration. All right, we're moving fast just to make sure we get the last two items here. Lainey, peer assist. Star Hi, seven can, you guys, can you hear me? Hello. Yep. Hi. Um, okay, I'll be super fast. Um, so, on behalf of uh, the engagement team and the mentor community team, we're trying to develop a better system for responding to inquiries that are coming from people who um, express an interest in helping us with education and documentation. Um, so currently we're getting about 30 emails a week via the tribute page, and the last I heard it was five emails a week. So good news <laughs> is that there's growing interest. Um, there's a link on line 300 that is an existing wiki that has a few canned responses, but we're trying to build out an FAQ and where, where it will live and the exact process is still TBD, but we do want to have um, somewhere some self-serve guidance on how people can get involved. Um, so just uh, would love people's uh, additions to this initial list of questions. If it's something that you've heard from people, again, um, initially focusing on education and documentation. If you've heard questions from people or if you have your own questions, 
Um, if you can add them to the list here, uh, we would appreciate it. And then as we um, continue to figure out plans for where it will live and, and how it will live, we will keep everyone updated. Sweet. So I might take a moment of crowdsource time to, to help you with this question on 303. So, um, it, so if you guys are out in the world and talking to people and you're running into quite like common questions people have about WebMaker, um, it would really help us to start collecting them here so we can flesh out this FAQ. So yeah, just common questions, you know, what is a hack? Why are you, you know, where can I get involved? Where do you have resources? And other kinds of questions that you hear. Um, please jot them down because we will try to get answers to them and get them pumped out to these, this growing number of people asking for info. Awesome. Cool. Well, thank you so much, Lainey, for, for leading the charge on this. And, um, and folks, definitely take the time to, to write in a question or two if you've got, if you've got one. Um, so last but not least, the lovely Chloe talking about Game On. Hello, everyone. Um, so I'll just make this very qu uh, quick. I've added a lot of text from the Etherpad on line 331. So last weekend, Game On participated in the Global Game Jam, which has more than 20,000 people all around the world who build about 3,000 games under um, the surprise theme of a heartbeat. Uh, so it was super exciting to participate. We sponsored about uh, six jams, and we had what is called a diversifier, so people could actually submit their games and uh, uh, game on a, a, web, um, a web theme. There's a symbol there um, just for you. And if you want to play the games uh, specifically that were submitted um, under the, the May the Web Force Be With You theme, you can go to line 334. And for any other uh, background and some inspiration from the keynotes for the event and, and some wrap-ups and, and game, game showcases, you can just follow the rest of the, of the text. That's it. Chloe wins for the speediest and brightest update. <laughs> Thank you. All right, everyone. Well then, um, last little item. There are some nonverbal updates. Definitely take a look. Um, one of them we'll be sharing in the next WebMaker call in more detail. Um, thanks, everyone, for joining us for this week. And um, thanks for everyone for presenting. And we will talk to you next Tuesday, same time, same channel. Bye-bye. Thank you. Please stand by.